Hey, you're watching Fat Man DD1, you dingus. Whatever he said. Yo, this is your boy Fat Man. All right. I was on YouTube searching and then I came across a video that said Sneeko created a full response to Charlie and everything that happened. And this is his video. We're going to watch it on Rumble and I'm going to react to it because. Charlie said what he said to Sneeko because Sneeko was mad disrespectful. Aiden Ross said, yo, you were wildin'. A lot of people told Sneeko he was fucking up. We're gonna watch this, and I'm probably not gonna upload this until, like, later in the day. So just kind of wait. This might be pretty long. Or it's, like, nine minutes, so the video might be, like, 20. Let's go. These are three things that YouTube promotes on the trending page. Moist Critical playing with and sitting on dildos. <laughs> Moist Critical using Satanism and Antichrist in his music videos. Ready to go, so it's Fortnite, and his rampant gaming addiction. Three things you can't say on YouTube, but you could say on Rumble. The COVID vaccine doesn't work. The 2020 election was against Trump. And billionaire pedophiles use wokeness to keep you depressed and poor. Number one, I don't think any of that is true. Actually, scratch that. Let's go on the trending page right the fuck now. All right, here we go. We're going to go to trending. K-pop. <laughs> and some rapper, I don't know. Uh, whatever this stuff is. Uh, Tyler, the creator, is all over the trending page. A music video, some expensive car, this guy, whoever these are, these are, these are, these are. I don't see moist critical in anything here in the trending page. And the trending page is the first two things. We have K-pop, <laughs> and we have somebody else's music video, and we have Tyler Creator, and bam. Those are the three biggest things right now in trending. We got music, we have gaming, let's see gaming. The biggest things in gaming history, we have I Show Speed, If this guy is. All right, those are gaming. We go to movies, all right, these are the biggest things trending. The Power Rangers movie, yes. Elements, yes. Super Mario Brothers, okay. So, and we just go to now in general. That's all that's trending. I don't know what you're talking about. So that part is wrong. When you go to his trending page, that's what the fuck is out there. Not everybody's trending page is going to be the same. Personally, I think so. I, I haven't seen Moist Critical promoting dildos on the trending page. So Sneeko out here lying on motherfuckers' names. Stop lying on niggas' names, Sneeko. I don't know if billionaires are using wokeness. This is coming from someone who understands what being awake and being aware of what's happening in the world really means. It's not what people call it now. This idea of being woke or being awake and seeing the world for what it is, it's a fathom, it's almost like a sleeping dream. You're not really woke, you're fake. You think you know what is real, but you don't. And you like to sit there and spit those stories and say, this is the matrix, we live in a reality and blah, blah, blah. I don't believe that. I don't. Some people do, and I can't, I can't deny that's your belief, but you can't sit out here and say billionaires are using wokeness. No, people are eventually just going to come to their senses and be like, well, this isn't right. And they're going to ask questions of why this isn't right. There's a video I did on TikTok talking about a lady who overreacted in a fucking supermarket parking lot because some guy 30 feet away is what her words are, said, excuse me, miss. So 30 feet is pretty far for someone to say, excuse me, miss and don't know what the fuck he was going to ask or do or say or any of that. But the reaction of this woman caused other people to react and say, bitch, you're crazy. What if he was going to ask you to time, help you with groceries, do whatever? No one knew. Personally, I added my commentary and got a whole spick of fucking people saying I'm mansplaining. Now, fuck those people. But it's kind of being like that, right? You have other people from the outside looking in, giving on their commentary to what your life and your reaction is. Same thing that goes to Moist Critical and anything else he does. Moist Critical fucks around with dildos and stuff because it's funny, it's weird, it's stupid. That's his comedy. His sense of humor, you could say he's kind of a dickhead. <laughs> sense of humor, childish, it's fun. It doesn't make sense, it doesn't have to. Why do you care, Sneeko? Let's move forward. This is why I was banned on YouTube. No, you were banned from multiple other things. Unless he's like, I was talking about the COVID vaccine, how the election was fake. The election could have been fake. Could have been. But people voted. If you vote, I don't really care. Personally, you shouldn't tell people you voted. Because at the end of it, it doesn't really matter if you tell people you voted. Because they're just going to be like, who'd you vote for? Like, mind your business, bitch. And Sneeko was talking all this shit about the vaccine, that it wasn't real, you got to get the jab, this and that. And I'm like, okay, some people are like, oh, the vaccine is killing people. No. 
People's health is killing them. There's people out here taking cheeseburgers a fucking day. There's people out in the middle of uh, middle America doing a whole bunch of crazy shit they shouldn't be doing, just dying from whatever the fuck. There's more problems than just a vaccine that's killing people. And some people's like, you can't blame China for the vaccine, even though it came from China. A lot of people were pointing fingers, but they were also being heavily uh, fucked up to all the Asian people that just lived here in America because of China. That's fucked up. When you sit there and you say these things, what you're doing is saying hot button topics that don't really add up to a full conversation, Sneeko. The fuck is wrong with you? Today I'm in Japan, a society that has not yet been corrupted by wokeness, training hard, working every day, and seeing the world. But it's no secret that I have a degenerate past. Around three years ago, when I was 21 years old, I went to a swinger party with one of my girlfriends and joked about how traumatizing it was on a podcast. I was cheating on her a lot, and I felt bad, and I thought it would make us even if we swapped with a couple. What? You were... Ch- First of all, that doesn't make you even, my nigga. What you were doing behind her back, she could see it. But when she got fucked by a guy in front of you, you could see it. That was worse than being behind your back, Sneeko. It was in your face. It was raw and you couldn't take that shit. And you were like, oh, it fucked me up a little bit. Because that's your fault. If you didn't want to be with her, leave her, nigga. You were just with her because of pussy and you were cheating on her because you were a selfish jackass, my guy. Think about this. My ex cheated on me. How does that sound, guys? Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it happened. It happened. We were growing apart. I was looking for work. She was going to school. Shit happened. And eventually, she cheated on me with somebody. and Or someone she was already talking to. Do I care? No. Was I mad? Yes. Did I know she was cheating? I had a full-on instinct. I knew it. It's deep down in your gut. You knew somebody else was all up in that girl that you were with. It's a feeling. Most men have it. Most men don't. I don't know what it is. But that was years ago. 2019 is a long time. And now look, we're 2023. I'm going to be real with you. Shit happens. But when someone cheats on you, they're going to leave you. Eventually, she left me. She said, listen, we're breaking up. We're being friends. And something tragic happened to her and I couldn't be there for her. And she just hated me for it. I, I don't care. It happened, and I was too tired of my relationship because she had a whole bunch of bullshit problems with herself, and I had uh, financial issues that I needed to cover. So personally, that's where life divides us. But you are going to sit there and say, well, I cheated on my girl behind her back. I thought if we went to a swingers party, it would make us even. What? Just leave her, nigga. Just leave her. That doesn't make any sense. That lo- It is not my life, right? I cannot critique Sneeko's life. I can only say it from like where I sit. That doesn't makes sense. You could have just said, hey, let's have an open relationship. I am scared of you cheating on me and I care about you and I want us to be open and honest with each other. There you go. That makes sense. She would be like, why are you afraid that I would cheat? I'm like, I don't know because I've seen a lot of stuff where people around me just cheat, blah, blah, blah. Make some shit up so you have a window of escape just to end the relationship as friends or just walk and go your separate ways or you just go. Because you cheated, you were the fuckboy, the asshole, the idiot, the moron, the selfish bastard that couldn't just let his selfishness and desire and keep someone chained up to you go. No, you go to a swingers party and let another guy dick your girlfriend down in front of you. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't make sense. It makes sense for you. It makes sense because I broke it down for myself, but it doesn't make sense. Personally, it doesn't make sense. And that, my friends, is what you say is a bad move. From Sneeko. I can criticize this all I want, but I'm only giving a bit of criticism where it's given. And I'm much older than Sneeko. I'm just going to be like that. I'm, I'm a little bit older than you. But off the cuff of what it is, you can't sit there and say, yeah, I did this because of such and such. You did that because of yourself. Like, nigga. But, hey. I don't do it anymore, I don't recommend it, and seeing how many people call me a cuck for what I thought was a funny story, you should probably not do the same. It was a funny story because you laid out your history on the table for people. But that's a pers- that's personal shit to you. You made it funny for yourself, but for the rest of them, they're like, ah. Eh. But you have to embellish a little bit. You want to make it funny. Boy, you better sprinkle some fuckery in there, like some stupid jokes, and, and that maybe she did this. Don't just... It's funny for you because it's part of your life and you're going from a personal place and you're saying it publicly. People are going to look at you and be like, ugh, like, come on, bro. 
I tried the lifestyle that the woke mind virus pushes and it ends up being who pushes that lifestyle? Nobody pushes that lifestyle. Nobody pushes that. I've, I've met one woman who was in a open relationship and she was married and she was like 45 years old or 42 years old, whatever the fuck it was. She was a beautiful black woman. She was lovely and gorgeous. I think I still have her email. She's nice. And she was nice at that moment. And I wanted to talk to her for a little bit and it never happened. But she was wonderful. And she said, me and my husband are married. We do an open relationship. And I looked at her like, how does that work? And she says, well, we, we've been together for so long that if he meets somebody and I meet somebody, we talk to each other about that person. Uh, we go on a couple of dates with that person and see if we can feel them out, if we like them, and we tell them our situation. Some people, they never talk to us ever again. Some people, they're interested in it, but they never really go through with it. And that's it. And we meet people who are down to have a one night stand with just one of us. And, and that's it. And then me and my husband still sleep in the same bed. It confused the shit out of me at that time. But I understood where she was coming from. And she had the ring and everything. And I was like, well, isn't that cheating? She was like, no, I still love my fucking husband. No one can compete and take me from my husband. We're just free enough to make these decisions. But we make sure we wear protection. We bring nothing back to each other. And we still love and care about each other. That was years ago. I don't even know if her and her husband are still together. But that was years ago right? That's a whole different statement. That's someone who didn't push that. She was saying it from her experience and she was much older, right? You know, I, don't, I think she said she was with her husband for four. She was been married to him for six, seven years, right? Eight years, something like that. It was hard to remember, but she's been with him for a long time. And that was beautiful. You're young to realize, oh, people are pushing this. Nobody was pushing that towards you. And he likes to say the woke. I don't think it's the woke. It's some people that are open-minded to that type of relationship. And you're like, I want to be a part of that. Okay, nigga, you can be, but that's not the woke. I think that's just you and meeting open-minded people who have that. And so you were trying to be open-minded, but now are you closed-minded? Hmm? What the woke YouTubers try to shame me for. Kind of ironic. I showed a moment of weakness on a podcast thinking that it'd be a funny experience to talk about and it will continue to haunt me for probably the rest of my career. Seeing all the hate online, it dawned on me in Japan, why have I never had a single negative interaction in public outside every single day? They all shake my hand and ask me for a picture. Not even a little joke, haha, ha, cuck, never. Considering I was trending for a week straight on Twitter with hatred, that must mean two things. Okay. I want to be real here and, and kind of cap this off. This video is already long enough, right? No one hates you, my dude. People probably just strongly dislike you. What dislike means, I don't like Sneeko. I go on about my life. That, that's just all it is. That's all it fucking is. I don't like you. I go about my life. That's all it is. People who say they hate you, they have strong malice and just don't like you. That's it. That hate that they confuse, that hate is strong dislike. That's all that is. For someone that's like, oh, I don't like Sneeko, fuck him. Cool, they don't like you. They move on with their fucking lives. For people in Japan, and most of the people that bumped into you look like they were American, and they was like, hey, Sneeko, what's up? That's it. None of them look like they were Japanese. And that's just me from where I stand. The Most of the Americans that know you are like, yo, or Europeans, or whatever the fuck. There you go, my guy. So you're sitting there like, oh, people hate me. I think people just strongly dislike you, but you take it as strong hate. And that hurts because you don't want to be hated. You want to be loved. You want to help people. You want to push people. And I understand that. But dude, you got to learn the two are completely different. One, social media breeds negativity. And two, the biggest haters just don't go outside. One Is that a gimp suit? <laughs> I think Moist Critical just does shit for like reactionary shit. This is hilarious. One year ago today, I lived that life. I was depressed and broke. I was out of shape. I was gaming. I was watching porn. I got high every single day. I was miserable. My girlfriends clearly didn't respect me. I never left the room and I had absolutely no purpose in life. Today, I'm happy to say I'm in the best shape of my life. I became a millionaire and my global network is only increasing. I don't say this to flex, but to show you that there's an option. Look at the lives of anyone making a hit piece video on Sneeko and look at the life that I am currently living in the present. Genuinely, which one would you rather live? All right, but 
first of all, they're not making hit pieces, number one. Number one, they learn the difference between a hit piece, right? An article would be a hit piece. Learn the difference. If someone gives their commentary or talks shit about you, they're talking shit and giving commentary or just being reactionary in general. Learn the difference from a hit piece. I can literally Google what the fuck a hit piece is and it will tell me what a hit piece is. Stop saying hit piece. No one is making a hit piece about you. Stop it, my guy. Second, People like Charlie just live their lives having fun, doing whatever the fuck they want just because they can. You can't look at somebody and be like, oh, would you want to be this guy with a big ass dildo in his house, his big ass house and doing all a bunch of crazy shit? Yeah. Some people probably say, yeah, I want to be Charlie. He has a, he has a big gaming company. He has a powerful comic book. He has an esports team. He streams and makes his own fucking money. He sells his own fucking merch. He makes his own fucking music. Do I have to go any further? He has his own fucking G Fuel. I think he even works next to G Fuel. He's battling YouTube with censorship. He created his own media company. What the fuck are you talking about, my guy? So you sit there and you say these things without knowing the man fully as a businessman. Charlie, yeah, fucks around, does all this shit, but behind closed doors, he knows his business, he has business partners, he's creating content all the time, he's fucking around with people, he's having fun, he makes content consistently, and he has other venues to push his money. So you sit there not knowing what the fuck you speak of. That shows a lot from where you stand. I'm a millionaire. Charlie's probably a fucking millionaire. He don't ever flex his net worth. He don't ever flex my guy, but you're flexing. He's like, I don't need to flex. You are flexing. Just say I'm traveling the world and growing. The fuck is wrong with you? Only the two ass, who first, two head, far as you turn, you is a new bitch. Voice critical is the physical embodiment of everything that I stand against. And honestly, no disrespect to him. I don't dislike him. He's just the perfect example of a popular YouTuber that's brainwashed. I used to watch. No. He just makes content and has fun. I don't think he's brainwashed. You don't, I don't think anybody believes Moist Critical, Charlie, is brainwashed. The dude has his own points of view. The dude makes his content. If you look at his channel recently, he's talking about the things that he doesn't like. He talks about the things that are really fucked up strongly. Just look at his videos and he'll give his opinions strongly on what he believes in. You just have to pay attention to it, but you're not. You're only criticizing the stuff that's funny for comedic reactions and stupid. That's what you're reacting to and showing clips of. So you're only giving one side of that. Get the fuck out of here. Watch his videos when I was a teenager, just like a lot of my other haters. And today he's everything that I don't want to be when I'm 30 years old. When I'm his age, I don't want to be playing children's video games, playing with dildos for content, and using Satanism to be edgy. I don't want to drop the Antichrist for fun. What is this? Please someone tell me what they enjoy about this. Text me quick, copy screen, it writes my dick. I don't show- It's just- It's just for fun, Sneeko. Charlie makes music, he has fun, he does his thing. It's not a big deal. The fact that you're like, I don't see the humor in this, is because you've grown. Some people that look back, whenever that was recorded, created, made, it's got to be a couple years ago. If it's recent, I'm probably wrong on that. But it's for fun. It's reactionary. He does what the fuck he wants. That's what grown-ups fucking do. His channel ain't for kids, nigga. His channel was never for kids. So why the fuck are you harping on it so much? Because you're harping on that. Because you feel like this, this is evil, demonic, Satan. No, it's just commentary. Or a man having fun and doing whatever the fuck he wants because no one can tell him what to do. You can't tell me what to fucking do. You can't sit there and say, do push-ups because I say so. Suck my dick. I do it when I want to. You can't use the Antichrist. Yes, the fuck I can. I'm making a music video, and obviously I believe in God, but I'm just using this to be controversial. Tyler did it. A whole bunch of rappers have used a lot of dark imagery to be controversial and get their names in the headlines, and that's it. That's what they've done, and it's pushed their careers, or it's had people look at them as the devil. Travis Scott is looked at as he was summoning Satan on, summoning on stage, and everybody was hating that. I'm like, bro, get out of here these clips to tarnish his image but to show you what he's presently promoting i do not promote my woke past i grew up online of course i've made many many mistakes 
My message today is to follow God, work hard, train hard, ban porn, stop gaming, and see what's possible with your life. There's people out there that like porn. There's people out there that like the game. I love to play video games. Yeah, I'm a little chubby. I've worked out before and I can work out now. But I still like to play my games. People who work out play video games. P people who come out the army go back and start playing video games to get their mind off of stuff. People work out, play games, watch porn because they can. And they probably, some of them look like you. But they're like, oh, this is an addiction. This is terrible. This is that. So what? That let niggas live their lives. You can't speak for other people. Let them decide. And that's perfectly fine. What's the point of having free will? Deciding what choices are bad, what choices are good, and what choices you look at from a moral perspective as, eh, I'm not going to do that, but I'll let you do it. Whatever, fine. What's the point of having free will? What's the point of letting people just be who they are? Oh, but that's bad for them. Yes, we cannot control every single human. Tell every single human what to do. That's life, Sneeko. Maybe you don't understand that. You're in Japan, but you don't realize the culture there. Also, there are men in Japan right now who are super fucking lonely for no reason. Uh, he Hikikomori. They're down with depression. They're constantly at home. They're alienated from friends or family. They just feel by themselves and they never get out of that. But there's some who meet other Hikikomori, other people who have been abandoned by the system and they meet other people and they grow friends or grow relationships and they grow out of their Hikikomori stage. Or you go to Suicide Forest and end your life, which is fucked up. There's some people who want to live. Japan has a strong homeless population growing. The youth are getting older and there's no young population coming in. Their population is decreasing. Like, there's problems there too, besides over here. Oh, but you're going to say there's no degeneracy or fat people. You've, he's tweeted this shit out. I criticize Moist Critical so much because he actually released a video that accidentally changed my entire worldview by slandering my now close friends at Fresh and Fit. All he did was criticize him in a video. And what you did was go white knighting for him, dick riding. That's all Charlie did was criticize the dude's story because he told a bad story. And if his story was that bad, if it was real, it was real. No one cares. But it just he just felt like, yo, this seems so fake. Like, why does this seem fake? Just get better at telling stories. Because I could have sat through that 10-minute video and been like, this is terrible. This is his story? God damn, nigga. Get better at telling stories. That's it. Just get, tell that nigga to get better at telling stories. Tell that nigga to go write a book and get better at telling stories because he sucks on video at telling stories. He should have wrote that shit out on the script and he should have been detailed with it instead of sitting in front of the camera talking because he's bad at telling stories. And Charlie made fun of his story. No one cares if it's real, if it exists. If Fresh lives that life, cool, no one cares. But it was just funny to make fun of his ass. That's fine, because that's all Charlie's about. Having fun and like, I'm gonna make fun of this guy because he thinks he's the ultimate alpha male. Because they do call themselves that. They call themselves rich, successful alphas. But you're not gonna like that. You white knighted for this man and dick ride him. That's corny, bro. You should have never did that shit. You should have just left it alone. But you went riding for your friend. No, nigga. That's stupid. I would have been like, eh. I would have made a video and been like, ah, Moist Critical got it wrong. I'm explaining how Fresh told me this, right? So Fresh told me like this, da 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 da. He, that's it. Just make a little rebuttal if you feel so strongly about it. But you came out attacking his girlfriend, idiot. You don't have to ask what Fresh and Fit stand for. It's in the name of their show. So for everybody watching this, what does Moist Critical stand for? What does he believe in? Do you know? Why do you care? Why do you care? Do you know? You don't care, Snucky. Snucko, you never gave a fuck what Moist Critical stand for. You never really cared for what Moist Critical stand for. What you want him to stand for, you're going to make fun of. You're going to attack. You're going to be a dickhead towards. There's stuff that he does stand for. It's on his channel. Go look at it. He's talked about it. He's talked about what, uh, another t a TikToker using a, another creator's death for views. That's fucked up. And he was passionate about that. 
He's talked about stuff on his channel, but what he stands for. Sometimes he just wants to have fun. Some people don't care what you stand for. Other people do. You personally are going to sit there and mock the man and be like, what does he stand for? I really want to know. And I think Ethan Klein or Hasanabi may have said the same thing. Why do I need to take my entire essence, my whole being of who I am, in a couple of words, say, I stand for this? Why? Why does someone have to do that? Why do anyone have to tell you what the fuck they stand for? That's none of your damn business. I must live in the actual clown world. Some people don't need to tell you what they stand for. Some people don't need to articulate who they are to you because who the fuck are you? You want to know what a person stands for? Mind your business. Just wait and see and they will show you who they are. And if you can't see it and they need to tell you, you've already lost the game of thought. People will talk and talk and you will see who they are. But if they talk and talk and you never see it, then you're blinded. You want them to tell you purposely who they are, what they stand for, what they're about. That's fucking stupid. Grow a spine. Glow, grow an actual fucking spine. And get your mouth off other people's dicks. For real. Because if I, I know what I stand for. I know exactly what I stand for. It's honesty. And more, but that's none of your business. But I can say it with my chest. It's honesty. I'm all about being honest, being real, being as best as I can. Some people don't care about that shit. They just want to have fun with life. Because life is an amalgamation of shit that just fucking happens, my guy. Because what I stand for today might change tomorrow. My shit might be honesty and good food. Honesty and good times. Scratch that. It's all about good times. I could change tomorrow morning if I want to. Like, eh, I ain't all about honesty. Like, yeah, there's some in there, but it's all about having good times. People change over the course of their lives. Charlie can't have his fun, can't live his life. He has to break his entire essence down into what the fuck I stand for and explain it to you. Like I said, who the fuck is you, Sneeko? Who the fuck are you to be like, oh, what do you stand for? None of your business. But then you would sit there and say, well, he has to break down who he is and, and tell people who... No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Some people don't have to do things. Some people can let things slide, let it go. But you'll sit there and be like, oh, he has to. Fuck out of here. That's so corny. What does he stand for? I don't. I've watched him for years. I cannot tell you what- You have it. You have it. And you sit there being like, I watched him for years. You casually watched him. And you've casually seen his content, but you haven't really- You haven't. He believes. How have you reached a point on the internet where you could have 10 million subscribers as a commentary channel and have no basis of commentary? He's given his commentary plenty of times. What are you talking about? Hold on. He's giving his commentary here. He's made fun of Gwyneth Paltrow here in this weird ass case. He's talked about the EDP drama. The dude's given his commentary on a lot of stuff here. E3 dying, blah, blah, blah. He says what's scary. The dude's given his commentary. All of this stuff here. Even talking about the whole Justin Roiland situation, right? The fact that the man's given his commentary even here in this video. That's a strong video and people should go check it out. He's given his commentary here in other places, and he's probably spread his ideas. But for you, you want to know everything about a person. And you will sit there and say, you haven't given your commentary because you haven't given your true opinion. The man has. That's how much you know. You would sit there and talk out your ass, and you don't really know. The only thing more pathetic than a guy who calls himself an alpha male. In that video, Moist Critical called Fresh a virgin incel loser. The same insults that I get. He insisted that men can't be with multiple women because fresh, honestly, isn't a traditional chat. There is no reality in the entirety of the fucking multiverse where this man has slept with one woman. Fresh was just telling a real story about how he pulled three girls in one night and he actually verified it, but Moist Critical didn't correct it. Even if he verified it, his story was fucking trash. That's the point why Moist was making fun of him. Other people would have watched that shit and they'd been like, yo, this story is garbage. He needs to get better. That's it. And he, if he's traveling around the world, he needs to make better stories and just write them out to make sure, okay, cool, this is compelling. This is strong. I got my bullet points. And I just go off the dome. Because if he goes off the dome, he might ramble and say some other crazy shit. This is when I realized the brainwashing in its purest form. Fresh knows he's an average looking guy, but he's known all over Miami as a playboy. I don't think that's true. I'll ask and I'll, like, I know a couple people that live in Miami and they'll be like, who is this nigga? 
Moist Critical just can't comprehend that somebody like Fresh, who's the same age and on the same level of attractiveness, can be with beautiful women because instead of networking, working hard, and looking fresh, he's playing with dildos and video games. But he's having his fun living his life. I bet money Charlie could put on a fancy suit, wear all the bling in the fucking world, buy a yacht, fresh himself up, show off his pecs a little bit, and tell his girlfriend, I'm about to flex to let me get some hot bitches. He'll do the same thing. And half of the bitches that fuck fresh and fit are go digging hoes. Bitches that don't even care about these guys. They just care about the status of Miami status and, and eating and all that other shit. That's it. These niggas can't. If they can pull women, fine. They pull little girls. Charleston White just came out making fun of these motherfuckers. But Charleston White said some crazy shit on Fresh and Fit that was really terrible. Off the cuff here, oh, because Moise is getting dildos thrown at him and, and playing video games and having fun, doing different things with his money and his time, he has to be like Fresh and Fit. What you want is a copycat. You want Charlie to be just like them because Charlie's not enough like these guys. He's too much like himself. Another adult doing adult things for his damn self. It's like someone came up in my house and told me, why you play video games, and they smashed my PS5. I'm breaking that nigga's kneecaps. The fuck is you doing? I would not, I wouldn't stand for that shit because I paid too much fucking money. I worked too fucking hard to get the shit I want. Charlie works hard to do whatever the fuck he wants. Pays off his debts. He pays off his fucking coworkers. He runs his own esports shit. I already said this enough. But you want him to be like them. That's what you want. Because you've seen, like, I've grown up watching him. He should be like these guys. Why isn't he like them? I'm upset that he's not like them. Why is he throwing dildos in his video? I don't like that. Why aren't you, like, on a yacht with all these hot bitches? Come on, bro. Just say you're disappointed in Charlie not being fresh and fit. That's all this video is basically saying. That the ideas of a guy that you watched doesn't hold up to the ideas of fresh and fit that you want Charlie to be just like them. Like, come the fuck on, my nigga. That's stupid. Stop putting your idealistic person onto somebody. Like, this is my ideal person. It's like, no, bro. You were the same person making fun of Andrew Tate. There's videos out there of you making fun of Andrew Tate and Tristan back in the day sitting in your apartment. But that's when you say, oh, that's when I was woke or naive. Like, get out of here. Oh, this is the lie sold to keep you depressed. The world is out there for you to conquer as a man, but the 1% provide us with so many distractions to gatekeep it for themselves. I criticize Morse Critical because he makes millions of dollars selling that lie. For he makes millions of dollars having fun doing what the fuck he wants. The fuck is wrong with you? The young men watching, is that the life you want to live at 30 years old? Yes. I would love to have millions of dollars doing what the fuck I want, making whatever fucking content I want, having my fun ass life. Because I'm not on a. If I have a money to buy a yacht, shit, if I have money to buy three yachts, sell about two of those, rent two of those shits out, I'll make more money from two of those yachts. The fuck is you talking about? But if Charlie has money to buy yachts and do all that fancy shit, nigga, that's his business. You're gonna sit there and be like, Charlie's not a man. Charlie's not like fresh and fit. Charlie criticized them when he didn't know the whole story. You little bitch. Like, this is the most bitchiest thing I ever heard. You're mad that he, another grown adult, does what the fuck he wants. Yeah, he shows it off to his audience. So what? His channel is not for kids, my dude. He just has fun and does the stuff that he wants to do. And caters, yeah, maybe to the algorithm of YouTube if he is catering. He's always at a million. So he's doing something right for himself. I can't say much about Fresh and Fit because they're always downgrading, disrespecting, talking mad, crazy shit to other women on the podcast who look like they came out their mama's house last fucking week. Never brought, never talked to successful, powerful women out there who have all a lot of money, more than them, brought them on the podcast and talked about relationships with smarter women. You won't criticize the niggas you're with, but you'll sit up there disrespecting these women who are just like, I say can't hold a full-on conversation as best as they can and talk about their points really elaborately. That's on me, right? But that's how I see it. I could be wrong. They might, yeah, they might have brought boss-ass women up there who made too, too much fucking money on whatever the fuck they do. But you're going to disrespect Charlie and tell people you want to be like this man. People will say... Well, I have my own esports company. I have my own dildo company. I create crazy shit with my best friends. 
and I can also raise money for crazy awarenesses. I created my own comic book and I've hit milestones on YouTube and I'm constantly getting better and better and having fun. They would say they want to be most critical. I don't think anybody would really, most people would say they want to be fresh and fit, but then they would, they would, they would have to really sit down and look at fresh and fit and be like, I don't really want to be these guys. They seem so fucking annoying. The terrible tragedy that happened in Nashville yesterday is representative of exactly what I talk about in my stream. A trans person shot up a church and the mainstream news was more focused on misgendering the shooter than addressing the problem. This CNN News? You went to CNN News, my dude? For real? Most people were upset that they misgendered the shooter. I didn't really care. I made my video and YouTube age restricted that video. Oh, I didn't mention that. YouTube age restricted that video. For the first time ever, it was age restricted. So I got to give my hats off to YouTube. There was a lot of gun violence in there. So The sitting president got on stage to provide a solution and instead opened up by talking about chocolate ice cream. Okay, that was an accident. So... There was already a segment where he already talked about the shooter and stuff like that. And then they cut back into the president kind of talking and talking about something else. So a friend of mine's hit me with that. She was like, do you know what happened here? I was like, no. So that kind of got mixed up in translation. He already talked about the shooter on the news. But then they, uh, he, something else happened they, they, for like two minutes. And then he went on to something else and talked about the ice cream and whatever the sitting topic was at that moment. That's what happened here. People really need to do their research. And good looking kids. I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. In Japan, there is no wokeness. There is no LGBT trans nonsense and society is civilized. Okay. Somebody spills over their bag and everybody comes to help them out because they see each other as extended family. They see, they have built with respect. I wouldn't say extended family. Each Japanese person is built in with respect, honor and doing the right thing which is perfectly fine help out someone because you'll know you you'll never know when you need that and karma and all that stuff goes around in their system they're also uh i can't say also very super religious they have religious practices and all that stuff but that moment was a moment in japan it was very it was recorded very closely i feel like that shit was rigged there's no culture war there is a life outside of the world. Not true. The BLM was protesting in Japan. Black Lives Matter was happening in Japan. I don't know what you're talking about. Degeneracy. And that's why I will continue to defend the movie Cuties until Moist Critical decides to debate me about it. Nobody who hates- No, bro. No. I've, I'm going to send you guys a link in the bio to my old video where I kind of break down Cuties talking about this shit. It was what it was. It was meant to be crazy wild. But Sneeko, no. It's the movie Cuties has seen it. It's about an Islamic family that moves from West Africa to France, a woke country that's literally on fire right now. I wouldn't say woke. I wouldn't say woke. He says woke, but it's usually radicals, right? Every group has radicals. And I feel like he used the word woke so fucking much, it loses its condemnation. No one's really woke. No one's really awake to reality. They think they are. And Sneeko thinks he understands what that is. And the daughter of the family gets corrupted by TikTok and starts dancing provocatively and leaves her Islamic values behind. She goes from a good Muslim girl to a degenerate wokey, lying, twerking, and fighting, and it blows up in her- She doesn't- I feel like he's missing the point where in the show, TikTok- the show, the movie, TikTok is- the internet is changing girls, looking at the aspect of young girls wanting to be older girls, and not understanding- where that comes from. So as these clips look very familiar, it's girls looking up to older, beautiful women online, portraying these roles of someone sexy and perfect and all that stuff. But it's not true. And that just, that just happens, right? And some people would say, oh, that's wrong and that's messed up. But that is what's happening, but slowly to people. And that's all it is, my nigga. The way you say it, it's like you're butchering it. Like, I feel like I need to watch this movie and I would totally debate you and wash you. Her face and her family's disappointed and eventually she reverts back to Islam. I like that movie because I see it as another version of my life. I started YouTube at 11 years old and following the trends of social media before God led me to complete degeneracy. But rejecting these values, I have found a new direction, purpose, and meaning for my life. 
A lot of the hatred is justified. I should not have been attacking the people in the soy war collage as much as I was, but I held a lot of resentment because they actively tried to get me banned on YouTube. One person. And then you're going to bring up um, Hasanabi. I don't think Hasanabi wanted to get you banned. I think Hasanabi had strong opinions that you were a dickhead. Might be wrong. They encouraged their followers to go and report my page. One they celebrated did. when I was canceled for telling the truth. Hey, this is... This dude did. This dude celebrated and wanted to get you banned. One motherfucker. It wasn't everybody else. Everybody didn't care. They just thought you were a fucking asshole. And you were doing wild shit, Sneeko. You're going to compete this one dude and copy and paste him to everybody else? This is not going to be a normal video. Today I want to briefly talk about the content creator Sneeko and ask YouTube to ban him from the platform. They publicly tried. You just showed one dude and then show Hasanabi underneath him and no video from Hasanabi? Hold on. They might, I might be wrong. Let's continue. To ruin my life's work, destroy my income, all because they disagree with my worldview. I don't want to attack people. Where's a Hasanabi clip? Where's the rest of the soy boys canceling you, nigga? So you lying on niggas' names. I fucking, I fucking can't stand you. Why would you lie on niggas' names, nigga? Where's the other cancellations? Of niggas not lying. Hmm? Where's everybody saying cancel Sneeko and ban him? One nigga. You fucking idiot. People anymore. I would love to debate them and challenge their ideas, but they would rather make documentaries deep diving into my past and my only existence on a platform that I'm banned on and grew up on is only hatred. You look up Sneeko, there's no more of my videos. It's just people saying that my life is over, insisting that I'm a bad person. So the- I don't think you're a bad person per se right and we really need to look at what bad person is you've done some dumb shit i can say that are you a bad person personally I, I can't speak for you i don't know you dude i only know what you put out there and what you put out there looks bad are you bad eh, that could be debated that could really be debated but you come off like a dickhead and that's you don't come off like a dickhead that's it if you found god you found betterness you need to look within yourself and think outside the box for a second. You got all this money, but you're not looking at how to really help things, right? Are you giving any of that money back to like the, you lived in New York City. Are you trying to help the homelessness in New York City? Are you trying to build better housing? Are you trying to really give back? Or are you just doing more selfish shit as you're doing fucking bitches driving fast cars? So where's the godliness in that? You're being selfish and you are being godly. So you're gonna sit there and lie. Come on, bro. But you're probably giving back through the social media that you run. You're helping people, telling people, oh, work out, do this, do that, and your life will change. What if someone listens to you, but their mental illness is still fucking with them? What if someone listens to everything you say, and they have severe, crazy mental illness, and eventually they say to you, your shit that you told me didn't work, what would you tell them then? You got to think about the, the reality of this, bro. I might be wrong, but still. The only option now is to be a force for good. And let's be honest, there is a clear pattern with the people that hate me. I don't say it to be cocky, but I am tall, I'm good looking, and I'm successful. That's cocky. You don't care if you're tall, successful, or any of that. You come off like a dick, Sneeko. You come off like a jackass. You come off with this bravado that you know it all, that you say this is it and you solidify this. I've seen plenty of times have destinies come on your fucking channel and has ripped you a new asshole. I've seen plenty of times where people have told you to relax about shit, but you've, Andrew Tate literally told you in a video one time that you need to chill and work with YouTube to push towards your goals to reach the audience that you're looking at. You need to work inside the system. That's what he told you. But he said, you're different. You'll tell Susan to suck your dick. Yeah, suck my dick, Susan. That's what you said. And Andrew Tate said, you need to work within the system so it doesn't kick you out. So you can easily work in there to move up, to make that extra cash and reach the audience. He said that to you, my nigga. And it's out there. It's out there. But for some reason, you don't see that. And you think everybody attacks you because you're tall, handsome, and successful. No. They attack you because you come off like a dick. You come off with this I know it all attitude and bravado. And that makes someone look at you like, well, you, you really don't know it. And you've had conversations with Muda. You have conversations with all these people on YouTube before you got banned. People saw you talk 
every day. I watched you live, my dude. And you end up crashing and burning of your own fault. You were joking on Andrew Tate than to suck in his dick. That's crazy. This is why the number one criticism is wannabe alpha male Sneeko. Oh, this alpha male, it's rooted in jealousy and the idea that masculinity is a bad thing. No one says masculinity is a bad thing. Right now, I made a video on TikTok and people are saying I'm mansplaining, which I'm not. I'm just being honest and saying what it is. Mansplaining is made the fuck up. I'll call it what it is. There's toxic masculinity, which is dudes that drive fast cars, smoke cigars, eat nothing but meat, slap women, be fucking crazy assholes, yell at you for no fucking painted reason. Aggressive motherfuckers. That's masculinity. Toxic masculinity. That's toxic. Real, being masculine is being strong, holding your own, taking care of business, also opening up to people, being honest, and learning when to get up and do what you got to do. That is regular masculinity. There is nothing wrong with regular masculinity. That toxic shit, that volatile, explosive, angry motherfucker that is just a pent-up rage nigga that didn't make it to the NFL, that's toxic. I think Smallville did like an episode, right? Smallville did an episode of a coach who could have made it to the big times, but he had this super firepower. He was rage. He was toxic masculinity personified in a dickhead. It was very strong. Old episode, like episode two or something like that. It was back in the day. Three, I forget. But people make fun of you because you portray that like a character, like you're cosplaying as a bravado, I know it all, big shot, masculine type of dude. That's what people see you as, fake. It sounds fucked up, but that's what people see you because they saw you grow and they see you now and they see the old you and they're like, mm. he grew, but he grew to be the thing that he said you would hate. I don't think I'm an alpha male. I've never once called myself that. I promote the ideas of masculinity because it is so desperately oh, needed right now. Debate. Being completely vulnerable, all this attack online has been difficult, but if Allah wills good for someone, he afflicts him with trials. Allah means God, by the way. Like, Allah just means God, just given a different name. And I have to be better now. I'm officially retiring the soy boy image. I forgive everybody who advocated for my cancellation or made documentaries about me, and I'm ditching my attacking style of streaming. And I apologize to Moist Critical for showing a picture on stream of you and your girlfriend. That was not very Christ-like. I'm sorry. And I genuinely hope you provide more value to your extremely large audience. The powers of Satan are taking over the West in real time, and I hope that everyone watching doesn't contribute to it anymore. No, the power of Satan is not taking over the West. People are just giving in to what they feel they want to do, or things that they feel are their, let's say their desires, or things that they feel like they're trying to get out, right? Some people are trying to follow and do a lot in this world, and personally, I get it, and other times, I don't. I don't really care. Women are making tons of money on OnlyFans, and I ain't gonna lie, those women are pick -me's. Those are the biggest pick -me's ever, because without those guys on OnlyFans, they can't survive. Those are pick -me's. That's just is what it is. Nobody will ever realize this, but the men on OnlyFans control those women, and no one will ever say nothing about it. It's not sexist, it's true. If a man pimps out a woman, it's slavery and capturement, uh, some other bullshit. But if a woman does, it's good business. It's terrible. Sneeko came out with an apology. I, shit, I thought I was going to die at that moment. <laughs> he really said, sorry to Moist Critical. Apologized. Nigga, you should just apologize and begin this video. Because at the end, he sh Only th All right. At the end of this, I understand... Sneeko loves himself, which you're supposed to. No one's saying hate yourself, Sneeko. People are just making fun of you because they can. And all they're doing is pulling jokes. Unless you're taking that personally, that you're not a real comedian. Just saying, just saying. But most people will be attacking you because of what you have done. And I gotta give it to this, he did apologize to Charlie. This is the longest video I've ever made. I am sorry. But through that, I gotta give it to him, he apologized. Other than that, he also did take a lot of shots at Charlie. And like I said in this video, no one needs to sit down and tell you who the fuck they are and everything about them. It's none of your business, my guy. Simple as that. And even if you love yourself, people look at you as the, they still look at you as this dickhead that was on YouTube screaming and being an asshole just because you were doing it for views and entertainment. You said it was only entertainment. That's what you said. 
Now it's different when other niggas attack you on the shit that you were promoting was entertainment. Come on, my guy. Come on, my guy. Think about it. You love yourself now, and that's fine. I'm not saying don't love yourself, but also really look at everything objectively of what you've done. Apologizing is the first step to somebody, and now he's like, I'm retiring those soy boys. I hope that's true. I hope later on we don't see a different Sneeko. I hope this is an evolution to now come back to the YouTube platform and get off this rumble bullshit. Personally, I've heard it from Sneeko's point of view. I've given my critiques, and most of you will say, oh, you're a dick rider. You're sucking everybody's dick. Fuck you. I've given my entire being to this one video of understanding what Sneeko's coming from, but also counteracting and stopping and saying, hold on, wait a second. You didn't think this out, did you? <laughs> like, the fuck is you talking about? But that just is what it is. This is my commentary, right? And I've given a little bit of myself in this video. Like, I have did another video. But personally, you don't care. So, tell me what you think. Has Sneeko changed? Do you think this was a genuine apology? Do you think he really cares about who Charlie is and what he stands for? Let me know in the comments below. And do you think this was a video, a good video that Sneeko put out? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Peace. Oh, this is your boy Fat. Man. Remember to like, subscribe, yeah, hit the bell, can't be notified for me. Do you remember to never give up, never surrender, keep on grinding. Mad love. Peace. And I'm out of here. I'm gonna go take a nap. Long ass fucking video. Peace. Shit. Yeah, been on drum. Yeah, been on drum. You real niggas gonna stop acting like, stop my, shit ain't the like my shit ain't the grill. This is the last Some of you one. niggas get your front teeth for a grill. I ain't talking about the contract. I ain't, ain't loving these fake hoes. Room smelling like eight switches. Room service like 2K. NBA, I'm ballin', nigga. All them niggas fallin' like all them niggas. Talking shit, I saw them niggas. Now they daughter want a picture. Rough ain't it? Fuck famous. Yeah, niggas too real, got the most haters. Wrote a story, so Stephen Curry. How we feel to be golden?